Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is the second video in my series showing you how to use your Creality CR Ferret Scanner in order to print a partial hand prosthetic socket. In the last video, I showed you my process using the scanner in order to capture the mesh of my residual limb. In this video, I'll be showing you how to use Mesh Mixer to edit that mesh into a file that you can send to your 3D printer. So let's get started. First thing we need to do is open up Mesh Mixer, load our scan. Okay, so this scan looks pretty good. It does have a couple holes, nothing really big. We can go and use the inspector tool over in Analyze. So for that, we can, we're just gonna go Smooth Fill and I'll click on these buttons one at a time because if you do all of them, then it'll end up filling, it'll end up filling this end. We don't wanna do that. So done there. So we'll go to Edit. Uh, we're really gonna do a lot of work refining this, editing this up with the plain cut tool. So with this, we're just gonna go from there and I'm gonna go for right behind the capitate bone um, and then a little bit more of the metacarpals on my pinky. Wanna do it a little bit closer to the wrist. And then I want a little bit of an angle going front to back there, probably about 15, 10, 15 degrees. Okay, let's see what that looks like from there. That looks pretty good. I want a little bit more of the capitate. That's, the, that's this bone right here, that little bump that you have on the back of your wrist. That's actually a, a pretty decent loading spot for, for the socket. So you want to be really cognizant to, to preserve that area because that is an area that's going to get a lot of load. Um, looks pretty decent. We're going to go no fill. No fill is really important here. Okay, so trim looks pretty decent. We're going to go plain cut again. And on this time, we're going to get rid of the thumb. So we're going to grab the red control and boop and purple over here. Okay, so a little bit in with that. We want to we want to cut right to where it's doing this transition right here from your metacarpals to your to your thumb. You want to go right to the edge of that web. Okay? Now we want to swing this angle over to where we're just about at the capitate to there. And then we want a little bit of angle going in towards the palm. Okay. So right about, uh, we'll go a little bit further in. Right about, right about there. Okay. Again, no fill except Okay, last thing we need to do is open up the ends of the socket so that your hand can breathe. What, what I've found is when you do a socket that has the closed metacarpals, oh, it feels gross. It feels just like a sweaty cesspool, your hand just kind of slopping around in there. I haven't had that as an experience when I open it up. It just seems to let your hand breathe a lot better. So take it for what you will. Um, my experience is I get a better feel in the socket, um, and I don't feel like it's always just kind of in that sweaty bleh. So, you know, you do you, but for me, I'll, you know, I like, I like the, the open ends. So we'll go ahead and let's see, we're going to go green and then purple. And then we need it to be a little bit more aligned. So, boop. So I'm gonna try to cut about parallel with metacarpal, so right about, eh, a little more, a little more, a little more, right about there. Okay, and then I want a little bit more socket, because you can always, you can always sand it down, but it is, it is a bear to put it back on. So let's get this a little bit more perpendicular. Um, yeah, that looks about right. Uh, so we're gonna go a little bit more angle. 
Yep, right about there, right about there, and then let's let's move our trim line. Gives a little bit more. Yep, like that. So then go no fill and accept. Okay, so that looks like a pretty good start. We need to get rid of need to get rid of this area to allow your thumb to have free motion. So I'm going to shrink the brush down some and then I'm going to start right here and it's about it's about this shape for me. So I'm going to zoom in a skosh and then go C for center. And then whoop. And then down to here, kind of give us a nice radius. Go ahead and grab all the rest of, go ahead and grab all the rest of this. And then up into here. Uh, probably don't want to grab that right there. So we're going to go shift. Shift allows you to unselect. So something about like that. Let's see. Okay, so I want a little bit higher right there. And then I want to get rid of this area right here. Looks like I didn't, I didn't trim it. Didn't get as much as I needed to on that discard. Let's see if we got any more. Nope, looks pretty clean. So now we're going to go... Uh, W for wire. As you can see, this scan is super, has a pile too much data for what we're, for what we're doing. Uh, so we're going to go to edit. We're going to double click on, so that'll highlight the entire, the entire uh, scan. We're going to go to uh, reduce. So that'll, that goes in Counts all the triangles. We're gonna we're gonna get rid of like ninety percent of our triangles, just because it's way more data than what we need. Uh, doesn't really serve a purpose for what we're doing here. So then accept, and then we're gonna do it again. Okay, so now we're gonna go to remesh. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to get rid of some of this weirdness right here. See all these extra little triangles? I lo just lowered the density on that. We're looking pretty okay, so go accept. Now we're going to go and play with the edges and kind of smooth all that out. So go ahead and hit escape. We're going to zoom in, go select. And we're going to grab just one of these. We're going to double click on one of these perimeter triangles. Boop, boop. Nope, not that one. Maybe this one. So select, boop, boop. Okay, so what that does, that goes around and grabs all of, or it grabs just all of the perimeter ones on the outside edge. Okay, so now we're gonna go to modify and we're gonna smooth boundary, kind of evens things out a little bit. And now we're gonna go modify and, or optimize boundary. Now we're gonna go to smooth boundary. Okay, so our object, our goal here is to get rid of all of these, all of this weirdness right here that has all the multiple triangles. So go ahead and adjust your sliders. You know, I generally run smoothness all the way up. Uh, you know, boundary up and down until it, it looks about right. Uh, sometimes adding an extra ring up will give you a different output. So, but I'm thinking that's about what we need to be. So I'm going to go select while everything is selected there. We're going to go and discard. So see how that cleans up that edge, just gets rid of all the weirdness. So now we're going to do the same thing on, on the wrist end of, on the wrist end of things. Ugh, that is a bunch of icky. So double click there, 
modify, optimize, modify, smooth, um, let's, let's up our smoothness and then boundary, probably right about there. We, we need to make, we need to maintain this capitate bone area. So just be careful that you aren't getting rid of too much of that area right there. And we'll go accept. And then while everything's highlighted, go discard. Okay, so that looks pretty even. Let's go select, double click the center of it. Then we'll go and remesh. That kind of evens out all of our triangles. Make sure we don't have any, any inverted triangles or any weirdness happening here. And accept. Now we're gonna go and extrude. Boop. Okay, so that looks all jacked up. We need to go to normal rather than constant. What that does is it makes it to where the extrusion is going out perpendicular from that face. Whereas constant, it would be, you know, constant, constant Z, constant X, constant Y. So we want it to be growing all the way around. Uh, so I generally do like a three millimeter. Um, so three millimeter for my extrusion and offset. We're in normal. Um, we're gonna increase our hardness. And what that does is that squares this edge out. Probably not 100, but probably in the 75, 80% range. And then accept. Looks, looks pretty decent. You know, this, this is a pretty decent file. I would go ahead and go and proof it on my printer. So next thing we do is go ahead and save it. Now all we have left is to export it. So we're gonna go export and then hand 620 and then we'll throw a one on the end of that. And, and we're gonna do that as an STL and save. So that's my process. You can take this STL, throw it through your slicer and directly on your printer. And you should end up with something that's really pretty close true to life. That's about all I have for this video. Please remember to like, subscribe, share my videos. I know it's like a broken record, but it really does help a small channel like mine with the algorithm. And if you have a chance, leave a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think of this project. Thanks for watching. Look, guys, it's a brand new box of treats. What do you think? You know what you think. What do you think? Are you excited? Yeah? Oh, look at you. If you had opposable thumbs, I would be useless. Oh. Oh my gosh. You can almost taste it. Almost taste it. Oh. Oh, the suspense is killing you. Are you going to open it yourself? You can open it yourself. Oh, oh, you can get some. Can you get some too? No? Are too old for those types of games? Oh, okay. Here you go. And here you go too. Here you go, and you, and you, and you. It is like hungry, hungry hippos with these guys. 
Nom, 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 nom. Temptations, I could really use a sponsorship here. Hit me up.